What's up, FOA squad? I'm Anthony, and welcome to our channel, Life with Anthony. I hope you guys are doing well out there. Happy Tuesday to you guys. Today, guys, is going to be a life update video. I have several things that I want to share with you guys and bring you guys up to date. Some of those things are new things. Some things are going to change. But first, I am at Camp Mars again. It's the campground that has that amazing kitchen, and I have certainly been taking advantage of that kitchen since I got here on Sunday. I don't know why I decided to stand up and make a video today, but I just felt like standing. As you guys can see, I am in the Easy Up camping tent once again. I decided to give it another shot. Quite honestly, guys, I love the space that this tent provides me with. I mean, come on now. I can put a bed in here, a table in here, have plenty of room to walk around. I have a smaller table, another chair in here, my refrigerator, my power stations. I mean, in terms of space, what more can you ask for? So I'm keeping both the gazelle tent as well as the easy up. Each campground, each campsite, I will decide which one I want to use. Now let's get into some of these updates, starting off with the RV park. As you guys know, I submitted an application to be accepted to live on an RV park. Not to buy a mobile home on the RV park, but to be accepted to live on the RV park. When I got back from the cruise on Saturday, I called them yesterday on Monday to see what the verdict was. And they told me that my application was not accepted and you know what? I wasn't mad about it. I wasn't sad about it. I was a tad bit disappointed about it. But as I get older, I kind of look at things that happened like in this situation as it was not meant to be. If it was meant for me to have a mobile home on an RV park, I would have gotten accepted and it would have happened. Um, the good part about it is I get to keep my money um, <laughs> which is always a good thing when you can hold on to your cash flow. So it wasn't meant to be, you know. Um, I do feel a little bit bad for my friend David because he has already moved forward and bought the other RV. So now he has to put his mobile uh, RV, uh, mobile home. He has to put his mobile home up for sale now. And until he sells his mobile home, uh, he will have two mobile homes on the RV park. So cross your fingers for David that he gets his mobile home sold as quick as possible since I am not able to purchase his mobile home from him. Um, and that's the update on the mobile home, or I should say the RV park decision. The next thing I wanted to bring you guys up to date is a change um, the California road trip is going to be postponed until October of this year. Now, in all of my excitement in my head when planning this RV, I mean this um, road trip to California, I somehow forgot that my mother's 80th birthday is in May. Her birthday is May 14th. And she saw the video and she texted me and said, so you're going on a trip and you're not going to be here for my birthday. And I have never ever in my life forgotten my mother's birthday. And I would not have forgotten it this year when the time came. I just would have been like, oh snap, I can't go on this trip, you know? And so I'm not going. I decided to postpone it until uh, October. All of my summer things will be over with. I will have nothing planned. And it will be give me something great to look forward to and the latter part of the year in the fall. So those of you who were excited about the California trip, you're gonna have to hang on to that excitement a little bit longer, but I promise you it will be worth it because now I will have all the time in the world to go to many different parts of California, have many different meetups and meet many, many of you. So it's coming, I promise you, and it's going to be an amazing road trip. So October will be the a uh, month that I take off to California. All right, so that's the California <laughs> update. I'm hoping that I remember everything because I did have quite a few things to share with you guys. So let's move on to the uh, YouTube taxes. Um, I'm very curious as to 
what the outcome of my taxes is going to be as a full-time YouTuber. Even though uh, the YouTube channel didn't pick up, the growth of the channel didn't pick up until half of the year, May of last year, I'm still curious as to how well or not well I've done with taxes being a full-time YouTuber. Now, I have faithfully, faithfully been reserving 30% of my YouTube earnings each month. I even have on my iPhone a note section where each month I calculate my 30% taxes. I also have a section of my available spending money as well as some other uh, categories to try to keep all of that stuff in line and keep my spendings in check and in line. Um, it is definitely helping me out to you know, keep track of my uh, spendings, uh, my available spendings, I should say, from my YouTube earnings. Um, a lot of you guys out there think that, you know, oh, I'm making a lot of money. You know, you have to take in consideration that YouTube takes 45% of your earnings and then what you have to reserve for taxes. Unless you out there balling it out and making huge amounts of money, you know, those two categories make a significant difference in what you actually can spend from the money that you are earning from YouTube. So, you know, I'm not a baller. You know, I have to still be very, very conscious of what I spend money on and how I spend money. Um, the goal for me is to save way more than I spend and that's exactly what I'm doing. So you might see me out here taking a trip here. And you might see me out here buying a few little products and everything. Kitchen gadgets and all of those things. Which are small things in the grand scheme of things. If I buy, you know, a, 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 a frying pan or something like that. You know, I'm not out here doing big things and spending big bucks and everything. You know, I spend my money on campgrounds and a little road trips and things of that nature, things that I like to do. But I am definitely still in a position where I have to be very, very mindful of the way that I spend my money. So not a baller here. Not I. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is campgrounds. I am so excited because I have booked and reserved all of my campground stays at Hillside Campground in Pennsylvania for the entire summer. I'm going to be staying each time at least 8 to 14 days. Now, on the off days, the off two weeks that I am not at the campground is when I'm going to be either doing some road trips, some traveling, or I may just go down to Baltimore and hang out for a week or so with my family and friends. I might just hang out in PA. It's not always going to be me traveling during the off two weeks of the campgrounds. So I'll be at a campground two weeks, up to two weeks for uh, each month, uh, starting Memorial Weekend. So let's just say June, July, and August, I will be at the Hillside Campgrounds for at least eight to 14 days. And then the other half of the month, I will be out and about traveling. So it's going to give me a good mix uh, during the summer and I'm really looking forward to it because there are some places during the summer that I am really eager to visit. I do want to visit Canada, Toronto specifically because I want to go to a baseball game. I also want to visit Colorado. I've always wanted to be uh, visit Colorado. I was a huge Colorado uh, Rockies baseball fan at one point. So I would love to see that stadium. And then some other st uh, states and cities that I've never gone to, I'm gonna try to get fit them in somewhere during the summer. So I'm very excited. Oh, excuse me. I'm very excited about the summer and what's to come. And I'm very excited to head back up to uh, Hillside Campgrounds and during the summer in May. All right. What else do I want to talk about? All right, let's talk about Mr. Lamont and the Cruise. I knew that I was gonna get a lot of comments about where is Lamont. 
Now, as a disclaimer, Lamont did give me permission to talk about this. I don't want you guys to think that I'm going behind his back and talking about him and shaming him or any of that stuff. I would never do that. He is my very, very best friend in the whole wide world. I would never do anything to hurt him. And I will always ask for his permission if I want to mention him on any of my videos. So, my intent of the uh, trip was to film when I was off the ship. To me, that was going to be the most interesting times of the cruise is when I get off the ship each of the three times and film there. You know, it's a fine line between when you're on vacation and filming videos for the YouTube channel. You don't want it to be overwhelming to the point where or you don't want to focus so much on making videos that you forget to have fun on your vacation. So I decided that, like I said, to film off the ship. And I've been on two other cruises. That was my actually my third cruise. And I find that off the ship things are more interesting than what's going on on the ship for me personally. Now, so that was the case. Um, now with Lamont, those of you, you guys know he suffered two strokes about two and a half, three years ago. And one of the ways that it affected him was the, his ability to walk. Um, it did also affect his equilibrium. When the boat was at, when the ship was at sea and it was movement only, Lamont had a little bit of difficulties in getting around. Um, somebody mentioned I should have gotten him a wheelchair. I didn't even think about that. I've seen like several people on the ship with the electric wheelchairs and everything and they were getting around, but I didn't even think about that. And the reason why I didn't think about that is because Lamont needs to exercise. I think he needs to get out and walk. Um, he does not do that you know, even when he's back at home. Um, I try, I get on him all the time. I get on Lamont all the time about, you know, go out every day and at least walk up the street one block and come back, you know, just for the exercise, just for, I guess, to help your, your movement, your walking. And he just refused to do it. So I knew that once we got on the ship that he was not about a lot of walking and he himself chose to stay and spend most of his time in the cabin. It was not anything that I did. He and I got along well on the trip. It was just his decision to stay in the cabin. And the most of the time he left the cabin when it was time to go eat, you know, and that was it. You know, I got a balcony cabin because I know that he loves balconies. So that was a plus for him because a lot of times he went out and sat out on the balcony and, you know, just just relaxed, you know. So <clears throat> that was that. I knew he wasn't going to be able to leave the ship because uh, it, it was a lot, it, it would have been way, way too much for him to, to get off the ship and do all the walking around and, you know, excursions was definitely out of the questions. So he did and spent his time on the ship the way that he saw fit. Now, yes, we could have made some little video together on the, on the ship, but for the most part, he was relaxed and I wasn't mad at him. Do your thing, relax. Uh, it still allowed me to go out and explore on my own, and which I love doing. So that was it. We're not mad at each other. He didn't get on my nerves. It's just the way he decided to spend his time on the ship. And I respected that, you know? And I let him go ahead and do his thing. I went ahead and did my thing. And we both had a great time. Uh, when it was all said and done, he thanked, he thanked me for taking him on the cruise. He was very grateful that I did take him on the cruise. And one of the things that he and I have is 
we know each other very well. We know each other very well. We have been friends and best friends for over 40 years, you know. He knows my shenanigans. He knows the way I talk and, you know, I know him very well. And sometimes it may not come across to you guys as that way, you know, but we are the best. Trust and believe. He and I are the very best. So that's the update on Lamont. Nothing that I did. We got along great on the cruise. It was just his personal decision of how he wanted to spend his time on the ship. And I respected that. And I was like, I'm out. <laughs> I went and got my excursions on <laughs> and I had a good time. I do think that I'm going to go on another cruise um, at some point during this year. I'm thinking maybe I'm going to try and find a cruise in September before my nephew's uh, wedding. I'm going to try to slip it in at, right after the campground stay and somewhere in between my nephew's uh, wedding. I think I'm going to try and go on another cruise if I'm going to see what's available because I did have a good time and I want to go on another one. But anyway, we'll see. All right, guys, so that's the update on Lamont. What else did I want to share with you guys? Oh, let's talk about these dentures for a minute. All right, so I am still adjusting to having dentures. I've had these in now for a few months, and it's still... Uh, I blame myself for taking a little longer to adjust to them because... You know, the first two months, I faithfully had these dentures in because that's the crucial time where your gums are healing and everything kind of reshaping your mouth and everything. Remember, I had seven teeth pulled out to get some top dentures and top ones and bottom ones. So it was definitely an adjustment for me. The thing that I can really say about these dentures is that they take up space in your mouth space that normally would not have been taken up if you don't have dentures in your mouth. And it gives your tongue less room to function with. And those of you who have dentures, you know what I'm talking about. If you never had dentures, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But, and I'm still trying to learn the placement and relax my tongue. I don't know what it is, but my tongue just be all over the place. I mean, I just cannot just relax my tongue you know and I find myself now going into the fourth and fifth month of having dentures that I have the dentures out of my mouth more than I have them in which I should not do I should keep these dentures in at least eight hours every day practice talking with them in my mouth practice eating with them in my mouth and all of those things to help me to better get used to having dentures I do know for a fact that uh, my next set of dentures, because these are my temporary dentures, I am going to be getting permanent dentures uh, when I head back to uh, Baltimore uh, in uh, April. And I'm not going to get these hard acrylic ones. I'm going to get the softer one. He showed me another option that was much softer and, and feel and touch than what these hard acrylic ones are. So I'm going to go for those and hopefully those will fit better in my mouth and feel better in my mouth. And right now I'm, I'm sort of used to having dentures in my mouth. I know the feel of them in my mouth. So when I get my uh, permanent ones, it shouldn't be too much of a, a difference, a change, I should say. So Definitely looking forward to getting the, the permanent ones and getting a different type of denture in my mouth. And hopefully they will fit without me having to use some assistance. I changed from fix, fix a dent to polygrip. And polygrip definitely holds my dentures in a lot better, you know, because it's, it's thicker. The polygrip is thicker than the uh, fix a dent. 
and they do hold much better. But I will say when I take my teeth out after putting them in with the polygrip, the polygrip has an awful residue taste because not all of the polygrip disappears as it's in your mouth. And so when I take them out, oh my God, the polygrip has a far more different residue taste than what the Fix-A-Dent does. But anywho, that's the update for the dentures. I'm looking forward to getting my permanent ones and getting a whole different uh, texture and make of the permanent dentures. Okie dokie, okie dokie. What else? What else, Anthony? What else? I know that I'm probably going to be forgetting anything, something. But for now, I think that's going to do it. I think that's everything. Um, I do want to thank all of the new FOAs. It's been a minute since I have personally welcomed all of the new FOAs to the community. This is a great community here. And I really am enjoying your company. And I thank you guys for tagging along and, and putting up with my shenanigans. <laughs> putting up with all of my shenanigans but you know this is life and life is good right now and i intend on to keep on enjoying it thanks to you guys i am allowed to enjoy my life the way that i want to um i'm always appreciative of what you guys are allowing me to do and how you are allowing me to live my life you guys know that i say that to you guys all the time because i don't want you guys to ever forget that I am very grateful at your company. I'm very grateful for your support. And I will never forget it. And I will never let you forget it. So with that being said, that's going to do it for today's video and all of my updates. And hopefully I did not forget anything because if I did, then guess what? It won't be on here. <laughs> all right. All right, guys. That's going to do it for today's video. As always, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to watch my videos. I appreciate you guys. You know that. And I'll see you guys the next time.